today I have a different video for you. <laughs> uh, behind me, if you can see, there's a truck behind me. Uh, so his wife, his name is Remington, his wife reached out to me and um, <laughs> she said that she asked him what he wanted for Christmas. <laughs> He's stuck. <laughs> there he is. All right, he made it. I get out of his way. Anyway, it rained like hell yesterday, so uh, it's a little wet. So let me speed up a little bit, get out of his way. Anyway, as I was saying, his wife sent me an email and she said, uh, "Hey, uh, I asked him what he wanted for Christmas, and he said he wanted to kind of learn how to shoot from you." Uh, I thought about it for a while, and I thought, you know what? Let's give it a shot. Let's see. Let's see what. Uh, let's see what it would be like for uh for me to try to in one day try to shoot uh teach him how to shoot i don't know i don't know what his skill level is so we're gonna go find out we're gonna go to 100 yards right now and uh once we do that i'll kind of be able to uh gauge his gear and his uh skills and then uh then we'll go from there and hopefully i can teach him something and um uh, i'm gonna try to film as much of it as i can see how it goes so we'll bring you along for the ride we actually set this up a couple of weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, and it rained like heck yesterday. And as you guys know, I'm in construction, so we got a big mess on our job sites right now. And I, but I, I didn't want to cancel on him. I, that's not who I am. So I said, okay, let's do it. Well, we had already set it up, like I said. So uh, here I am. Okay. So all I'm saying is, don't. I don't even know if I'm gonna do this anymore. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll I, I, I'm doing this for two reasons one because his wife was uh, I, I don't know I think that's a nice thing she did for him and number two I'm trying to see if there's uh, there's any way I can do this more often with maybe some of you okay but at the moment <laughs> uh, don't ask please thank you so much so all right let's go to 100 yards and uh, Get his stuff uh, sighted in. All right, so we got the targets up. This one has one hole in it. I just realized that. But uh, anyway, uh, got it all set up. We're going to be shooting from back there. You can see his truck over there. That's about a, well, it's not about, it. it is 100 yards in front of his truck, not where his truck is at. I just didn't want him to go all the way down here because he'll get stuck. All right, let me get these cows out of here and we're gonna see how well his stuff is shooting. No pressure, Remington. <laughs> I almost got stuck right there. It is super wet. We had about five inches of rain yesterday, so yeah. <laughs> it's super wet here. This is Remington, by the way. How are y'all? I just told him that we're gonna sight in and uh, you know double check everything. You gotta do a hundred yards. If you don't have a good hundred yard zero, you're just guessing the rest of the way out. Okay? So I told him we're gonna double check everything. And what did you say? I was messing with my zero stop last night. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Honestly, because I was been testing bullets. Uh huh. And whenever I initially set my zero stop, it was not accurate. Okay. So, do you know if you have a hundred yard zero right now? Close. As, as far as far as <laughs> I, like I can that. guess. Close. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna make sure. Yes, sir. That's why we're here. Okay. All right. Get your uh, stuff set up. Uh, what are you shooting? I've got my 700 Remington Action, uh, 24 inch Criterion barrel, shooting 308. So 308 Winchester. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, he gave us a shooter's long answer. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, Freedom Seed are you shooting at it? Um, I've got, I brought Burger 175 OTMs, 185 Juggernauts, 200.2 X Hybrids. Oh man, this is a Burger guy. All yes, right, sir. let's do this. All the full brass. There you go. All right, man. Get your stuff set up right here. Disclaimer: <laughs> I am not pooping on Remington. I'm looking at his gear and I'm just giving him my opinion, okay? That's it. That's 
take it for what it's worth. So the first thing I asked him about was his uh, monopod right there. And I told him, <laughs> this is what I told him. <laughs> I said, you need to take that monopod and throw it as far as you can throw it and then just never look at it again. The reason for that is you need to learn how to shoot off a rear back. Monopod, I, it's fine if you're shooting, let's say, 100 yards or something, and then you, that's it. But in actual, for example, if you're going to be hunting, you're going to be uh, shooting PRS, whatever, you need to be shooting different distances. You're going to need to transition. You're going to need different heights. So a rear bag, you're going to be able to squeeze, make the gun higher, let go, make it lower, all that good stuff, you know, flip the bag. And it's just going to make you a better shooter overall. Okay, so that's the bottom line. Okay, uh, now if you have a monopod and you like it, that's fine. But I'm just saying for versatility, plus, you know, you can have a rear bag and you can transition the same bag to all your different rifles. Whereas if you have a monopod, you get used to shooting monopod on one rifle, the other one doesn't have it. What do you do? You know what I mean? You're changing your styles. Correct. So you need to learn how to shoot with a rear bag. That's going to be. Maybe not as stable at the beginning, but trust me, you'll get really good at it. Okay, number two. <laughs> I don't know. I see these things all the time, and I don't know what they do. I don't know what they're for. So he tells me it's so that your hand is in the same spot every time. Yes, sir. I like resting my hand on it. Well, that, okay, I get it. However, it's going to be in the same spot every time if your body's in the same spot every time. Otherwise, once your body changes, your hand has to change. Okay, so for example, if you're shooting, I don't know, off a fence and the fence is up high and your hand is like this rather than like this, now that just changed everything. So the point is it really doesn't matter where your hand is, it shouldn't matter. You need to still be able to break a good clean shot every time. So again, I've never used that, but I think based on my experience, you'd be better off not getting that and just learning how to shoot in every situation possible. That, like I said, that locks your hand in in one position, which means your body has to be in the exact same position. And uh, I guess for prone, maybe bench. I don't, I don't know how you shoot. I normally shoot out of the bed of my truck with my gun resting on the roof of my cab. Okay, well for that, it's probably fine. <laughs> but once, you, let's just say if I, if I say, okay, let's shoot off the, the top of the T-post or a, a fence post, or uh, I don't know, shoot off the rail of the bed or things of that nature, all of a sudden uh, that may even get in your way. That, that's the biggest thing, it may actually get in your way. So, um, you know, go ahead and use it, but I'm just saying you need to keep that in mind. The less gadgets you need to shoot, the better off you're gonna be in the long run. I've learned that the hard way. If you learn how to shoot with that, and then you transition with a rifle without it, all of a sudden you can't shoot. Yes, and it should not be that way. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, I, I, anyway, I just, uh, my opinion, I've never used those, uh, but I have used some gadgets that then transition to a rifle without them, all of a sudden I'm, and then, and of course now, now I have a built-in excuse. Like, well, my rifle has that thing. Yeah. Well, that shouldn't be. You know, you follow what I'm saying? I understand. All right, let's shoot. How long have you been doing this? Well, six months ago, I'd never shot past 400 yards. And before that, I had never shot past 100 yards. Okay, so so were you a hunter or what got you into this? Sport. I've been shooting since I was five years old with my dad and stuff. Uh -huh. and I just, I really enjoy it. Okay, good. Well, okay, so uh, here's your uh, your um, boomstick. So it's a Remington 700. Is that a Remich setup or what is yes, it? Yes, sir. Okay, it's a Remich uh, setup with a uh, 308 Winchester. You have a you have a can? Yes, sir. What is that? Um, that's going to be the Rugged Surge 7.62. Okay. And uh, of course he has a what is that? A Vortex uh, it's a Razor. Razor. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, is that a chassis? What is it? That's going to be the Remington Precision Rifle chassis. Oh, so that's a Remington deal? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, of course he's got a monopod and he's got what is that thing called? It's called an ergo grip, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, ergo grip. So, all right, man. And, of course, you have an Atlas bipod. Yes, sir. Atlas on front and rear. I told him uh, 
he's got it backwards. He's got the release on this side. It really doesn't matter which way it is. However, if you are back to uh, back to functionality, right? If you're shooting a match, a PRS, or, or if you just need to reach over there and adjust your bipod or remove it or slide it or whatever, um, you he's right-handed, so his right hand's gonna be on the grip, right? Like this. So his left hand is free. So I told him the release needs to be on the left side so he can reach over there and grab it and do his thing. So again, that's just uh, one of those things. It's minor, but it will help you in the long run to uh, to do it that way. So here's the thing I have against the monopod. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, and I'm hardly moving it. See how unstable it is? It's very unstable. So let's try that with a rear bag. I have some rear bags. This is a fortune cookie. Um, just pull that monopod off and see see how good we can get. We're trying to we're trying to get you as stable as possible. All right, so I'm getting him to try a rear bag. Put the uh, flip the bag sideways. There you go, like that. Mm -hmm. just, you got to get it in. So he he left his monopod on there. He just folded it up. And uh, you good or you need to go higher? Nope, can't go any higher. Try it with a monopod. Nope. Do that no, you're not doing freehand. Here's one of the things about being a precision shooter. You will, under any circumstance, find the best position ever, the most stable position, okay? Unless the options are totally exhausted, okay? Right now we have options, and right away you go to, I'll just do a freehand, no. I don't care who you are, you're not gonna be as precise freehand as you are with a rear bag or a monopod. So, back to the monopod. See, you can't even shoot prone with a monopod, it's too high. So we already have a problem, Not a, no big deal. We'll, we'll work through it, but we're gonna try to get as stable as possible. That is the key, okay? So let's see if we can take the thing off somehow. We'll saw it off if we have to. We'll cut it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're pulling off the monopod. Monopod is off, we're gonna shoot off a rear bag. What else are we going to take off your rifle, Remington? If we, if we need to take the <laughs> shelf off of there, we can take that shelf off it's of there. It's up to you, man. I'm, I'm not... Like I said, I'm, I'm just kind of giving you my opinion on that. I'm but the monopod for sure coming off. So the monopod is off and he decided to take the shelf off too. So, All right, we're back to basics. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's flip that backwards you flip while we're at it. Well, I'm just saying that way, if you need to reach for it, you can turn it around. I've never taken it off the gun. Wow. Is it JB welded on there? <laughs> there it is. There it went. Are these tight? Let's make sure everything's tight. Okay, that's good. Before we go any further, we're going to verify everything is tight. Did you verify? Yes, sir. I've torqued these to 40 inch pounds three nights ago and haven't shot the well, fire. What did you torque to 40? The right up here. The scope rings? 40 inch pounds, yes. Wow. Sir. That's what that's what Vortex recommends. Oh really? Wow. Yes, okay, that's a lot. Okay, that's fine. So everything's double checked. I believe so. Yes, sir. If we need to go through it, we'll go through Let's it. Let's go through it just to make sure. All right. So I was trying to take these rings off completely so we can check the the mount because you know this everybody always checks this but never the mount. Well, we can't get it off because Remington probably used the cheater pipe on these things. See, I got the I got this wrench maxed out. And it ain't coming off. I'm at a hundred, no, 80 inch pounds right now. Okay, so these are, these cross bolts, they're pretty thin. The ones that go across here. Okay. They're pretty thin. So you want to do maybe 60, maybe 70 inch pounds. Uh, don't use a wrench with a cheater pipe like you did. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're just going to have to assume that this is tight and just double check everything up here. Because we can't get these rings off. I just set the wrench to uh, 30 inch pounds. And just go over everything. Make sure it's tight. Alright, this is the last one. And done. Alright, Remington. We're finally ready to shoot. You ready? You yes, can sir. on here tight? Yep. Alright, let's do it. It's decided in? We're going to find out. <laughs> well, is it? It, it should be. Is yes, it sir. It should be zeroed with 
at open, open your bolt. Open your bolt. Um, how fast are you going? Do you know? I have no idea. All right, well, let me set up the chronograph then. All right, he's gonna get his mag. I got the uh, lab radar set up. If you're shooting to press, you need to set it up in front of the uh, muscle so it'll pick up. Otherwise, it will not trigger. So I'm gonna set it up maybe I don't know, 18 inches or so in front of the in front of the barrel. All right, man, let it rip. I'm gonna go look over here on my spotting scope and see what he does. All right, so he hit about two and way high. Maybe one and way to the right. Go ahead and shoot another one. Okay. One more. All right, so you're high. So you're about two MOA high. So you need to come down, but the zero stop prevents you from doing it? Yes, sir. We're fixing to adjust that. So what do you do? You just go up two MOA and then lock it down and then... It no, sir. It's actually got another lock ring on the inside underneath this turret. Uh huh. That whenever you break the set screws loose, it will... Right here, you break these loose. Uh-huh. And then you can adjust it. This this disengages it from the locking mechanism. Okay. All right. Well, I'll let you do your thing. All right. So now he's hitting about three MOA or two MOA low. Huh. All right. So whatever you did, just split the difference. <laughs> Look at the chronograph. See how you did or your speeds. Extreme spread. <laughs> 64. Woohoo. <laughs> Uh, your average speed is 25.50, okay? So, 25.50, average speed, so that's what we're going to use, okay? Let's go to the target, see how you do. All right, these were his uh, first three, then he came down three minutes, went there, then he went there, came up another three-quarter MOA, and he hit here, so then we just came down quarter MOA and we are good to go I so like it. we can go 500 or we can go straight to a thousand it's your preference we can no do it's not my preference what, what do you first. want to do? 500? 500 all right first. Baby we're, gonna, steps. we're gonna go to 500 I think you're ready now uh bag versus monopod bags better all day I, I noticed that my heartbeat wasn't bumping me off target okay and were you more comfortable with Yes, yes. It, it was easier to, to stabilize the, the weapon. All right, well, there sure. you go. All right, you got, a, you got a range on the target? Yes, sir. What you got? We're showing roughly 475. 475. It's uh, pretty windy up here. You got a way to get the wind? No, sir. I don't use an what, anemeter. Okay, uh, how do you, do you have a ballistics app? No, sir. I've always just shot and then corrected after that. Oh, no, no, no. We got to, we got to make, we got to get first. First uh, shot impacts, man. That's the name of the game. All right, I'll help you with it. We're gonna try to get Remington a first shot impact at 475. So, ballistic arc, or geoballistics, that's really the name. Geoballistics. Right there, I don't know if you can see it, right here. Okay. So go ahead and download it, you get a, it's free. You get a one profile, so we'll make a profile for your rifle right quick. Let's see how close we can get with geoballistics and go from there, how about that? I like it. I have my uh, Kestrel, and I, but I really don't use it for ballistic purposes. I use it just to get my wind, and I keep it in my backpack just uh, just in case my phone ever goes dead or whatever. It's, it's a redundant uh, system that I have, but I use geoballistics pretty much 99.8% of the time. All right, so we got geoballistics downloaded. We got uh, geoballistics. You can load weather from the... You like to access your microphone, nope. Uh, and then you can load the uh, all the weather conditions, all that stuff. So we did all that. Then you go to the competition mode. You type in the, you push your uh, shot bearing. You point the phone right at the target and you push that. You type in the distance and we're at 475 yards. So it's calling for 10.5 MOA elevation and 0.2 MOA left. So just put a click left. And ten and a half MOA up, and send it. See the silhouette there? Yes, sir. All right, hold that center. You put a you put a click left, ten and a half MOA up, right? Right. All right, send it. 
Yeah. Yeah. You're way off to the right. Looks like it was way off to the right. How far off to the right? Mill it or check it with your reticle. Um, if I had to guess, I would. No, say you don't guess. Did you see where it hit? I saw the dust trail. Okay, so put your scope, put your uh, reticle back in the center. Yes, sir. And then where your uh, reticle, see where it hit and then measure. Follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's about 6 MOA. 6 MOA? There's no way. All right, well, hold six and one. See what happens. Hit. All right, you want to hold a little more. I'm going to hold six MOA on the very edge of target. All right. You went left. Hold six. Six again in the center. Did you see where it went? No, sir. All right. You got another one? No, sir. All right. Well, we got one impact at 6 MOA, which I don't understand why it's that much. I couldn't tell you. Anyway, but did you see uh, how to follow up a shot? Yes, sir. That was pretty simple, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. So that's how you do it, you know? So what you do is you go back, put your crosshairs where you were aiming, and then you look over there where, where you saw the hit, and then you you know you use your reticle to measure and then you literally just wherever it hit you swing your reticle over and the point where the target or the the shot hit you move that point over to the target and you should be right on target and he was but the uh, follow-up ones didn't work <laughs> no they did not <laughs> all right uh let's try it again go six moa left again yes and your elevation was good so let's keep it right where it was all right whenever you're ready Did you see where you hit? No. All right, follow it up. Stay on the gun so you can see your own hit. Oh, you're way left now. Okay, go back to one MOA left. Just hold. One MOA? Yeah. That's where it, was, that's what it should be according to the wind now. Looked like it went right. <laughs> hold an extra MOA. You want to just dial it? I'm going on it. You ready? Just dial it. You want one MOA? One and a half. Go one and a half. Left. Hold that center. Mm -hmm. Got it. Follow it up. Mm -hmm. Way off to the right again. All right, we're going to have to start blaming your rifle, I guess, at, at this point. Unless you're that bad of a shot. <laughs> I'd say it's my ammo, my reloads. All right. Okay, well, you got a couple of impacts. You want to shoot with my rifle? See if sure. it gets better? Would you like to try mine to see if it's the rifle or the shooter? Well, we'll find out once you shoot my rifle. Okay, I like it. All right. Let me get it set up. All right, so your left hand. There you go. You got it. Where you squeeze the bag. You're, uh, are you on there? Yes, sir. Pretty stable? Yes, sir. Okay, let me get on the other side. Let me step over. Okay. There you go. Get your thumb in that thumb rest right there. There you go. Uh, everything looks good. All right. Whenever you're ready. All right. Ready when you are. Did it go left? Too much smoke. All right. Try another one. You got it. Are you stable? Yes, sir. All right, go ahead and do another one. Oh, yeah. All right, come up uh, about three tenths. Three tenths? Actually, two tenths. Come up two tenths. Okay. All right. And go over to the right one tenth. Go one tenth to the right. Hold the center. All right, send another one. You need to be on the bag. I see I see you're bouncing the gun. Okay. Go ahead. All right, same same spot again. So you can shoot. <laughs> That's the good news. <laughs> Drop the mag. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you can shoot. That's the good news. You see how you were stacking them with that one? Yes, sir. So, I mean, I don't want to cost you money, but... <laughs>
<laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> You're a much better shooter with that thing. I really think it's my, my ammo. Yeah. I, I, I've noticed a lot of difference in my neck tensions whenever yeah. I'm trying to load. Are you using a mandrel after? No. Oh, okay. So after you size your brass, get an expander mandrel. That's going to make your uh, ammo a lot more consistent. So the first shot, were you, uh, what happened there? It was, you know, in, I don't know. It just, it, reviewing the footage, it went just, just right below the target. Well, I think, I think I wasn't expecting that trigger to do what it did. Oh, I should have had you dry fire a few times. Think, think it, maybe you pulled the shot or? It, it's it, was... it probably, more than likely I pulled okay. the shot. Well, either way, I mean, once you got on, you, you were on, so. You, uh, you want to shoot some far targets now? Let's do it. It's about 600. And if we connect on those, then we can move back to about 1100. Okay, I like it. All right? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. Yes, sir. We're showing 556. 556. Yes, sir. To the rams. All right, so we have a ram down there. All right, right there, we have a ram and an IPSC. That's what we're going to be shooting at. That's 500 and 556? Yes, sir. Okay. I use got... the Geo Ballistics. You like that? Yes, sir. All right. Ranged at 576, 556. Put it in, it's calling for 13.8. I'm gonna dial for 13.75. Uh-huh. And one, one and a half MOA left. All right, let's do it. All right, man, I'm ready. You gonna shoot the ram? Yes, sir. All right, I'm ready when you are. I'm gonna send something its way. All right, go ahead. Make sure you're nice and stable. Oh, you got it. Send another one. Dead center. Got it. Man, now you're stacking them. You're uh, you're shooting a little high. Come down, uh, come down half. A, well, I don't know where you're holding. Where are you holding? On the dot or where? It doesn't have a dot. <laughs> no, sir. I'm uh, point of impact is a little higher from where I'm aiming. All right. Well, then then uh, compensate for that. Come down maybe uh, two clicks, half MOA. You want me to dial or hold? Yeah, dial, dial. Two All clicks right. down. All right. Set in one. Go ahead. Impact. What do you think? That Geo Ballistics is on point. <laughs> it's dead on, ain't it? I, I, would, I would have had to take that many shots just to get on target doing it the way I used to. No, no, no. We we need to always try to get on target on the first shot. I like that. It's a lot more fun, ain't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd like, I'd like to say some stuff, but I'm sure younger people watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, well, there you go. So we've been here for two hours. Yes, sir. How much better are you now than two hours ago? I'm going to take that bipod and throw it as far as I can. <laughs> the I'm mono, that you mean the monopod? Yeah, that monopod. How do you like that bag? You, you might lose it on the way back. <laughs> it fell out of the back of your truck. <laughs> but uh, as far as your uh, knowledge, knowledge-wise, so, I mean, we've only done basic stuff, really. I mean, but it's just like the, the ballistics, right? Like the software. I mean, that is critical, right? Yes, sir. Now, now you're not going to be able to live without it. I used to tell people you don't need that. <laughs> oh, you were one of those guys. Yeah, uh, I like that. That that's great. Yeah, that, it's it makes awesome. it simple. Well, you, I mean, that's a Ram at five. I mean, the other thing is, I don't know what happened at four hundred or three cent, whatever four seventy five. Well, right now, all I have all to do of is a sudden, make one click. I understand. Not only that, but see, now your your rifle shooting a lot better. I think you're just getting more. See, we were using that other smaller bag. I told you, I, I noticed you were not very stable. I had you go to the bigger bag on my rifle. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I mean, you were stacking them pretty good over there. And that's a farther target. Yes, sir. So I think maybe you, you're just getting more comfortable, you know, I mean, with the bag and everything. Cause my first time shooting with them today, but. I understand, but I mean, that, that, that was a totally different rifle. Yes. I mean, that, that thing was shooting a lot better at 550. So, good. Now what? You want to shoot my rifle or you want to move back to... Let's stretch the legs on this 308. All right, let's do it. All right, so we're set up up here and the uh, the, the ram that we're going to shoot, it's way out there. Okay? The uh, We tried to get it with the uh, rangefinder. We couldn't do it. Well, the beauty about Geo Ballistics is it has a uh, map mode. And uh, anyway, so what you do is you go to where you're at. You... Uh, you click on the shooter and then you move the crosshairs over to where uh, where the target is and you click it on there and it tells you the distance. And uh, the distance is 1142. 
We checked the other targets as well with the uh, geoballistics and it was within one yard of the rangefinder. So we're pretty confident that it's correct. So that's what we're going to use because we have nothing else. Correct. <laughs> I mean, you have a rangefinder, but it didn't pick it up. And uh, I mean, based on what we did earlier, it's pretty much dead on the geoballistics, right? I, I would say so. All right. So 1142 yards. It's calling for me to dial up 49.9, so I'm going to dial up 50. 50, 50 minutes. Um, it's asking me to hold over left 10.9, so I'm going to consider that 11. 11 MOA? Yes, sir. All right. By the way, the wind is a little stronger now, and we're a lot farther. So 11 MOA left, 40 MOA up. 50. 50. 49.9. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Let's see if the razor's got it in it for adjustment. Yeah, let's see, uh, let's see if we can get there. Dying like crazy over there. Yeah. The razor's got it in it. You got it, huh? 50 MOA? Yes, sir. All right. 50 MOA. Oh. All right. Target. Way out there. All right, Remington. Let's do this. Ready when you are. Could you see where it hit? No, sir. I'm staying on rifle. Could not see any kind of dust. All right, shoot another one. Thirteen. All right, thirteen shots. Still can't get on on the ram. We actually did hit the ram, but you were aiming at the other target. Correct. <laughs> so, um, I think your uh, ES of sixty is probably now really, really playing a part into this. So, all right, let me uh, get my rifle. See if you can see how it goes with my rifle. All right. You want to shoot it? Yes, I do. All right. All right, Remington. So it's calling for 9.5 mils up. 9.5. And one mil left. One left. One mil left. Okay, you're going to hold dead center on the ram. Just get comfortable. Let me know when you're ready. I can lower that bipod. It seems like you're trying to raise the, the back too much. Uh, I've got it resting on it right now. I know, but it seems like... It, well, no, no, let, let's, no, no. It's not me. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just asking you a question. See? Okay. See how you're bringing the rifle way up? Yes, sir. Let go of the bag. No, no. Hold the rifle where, where you need to hold it, but let go of the bag. See how there's a gap under it? So I think the bipod needs to be lower. Okay. Seems like you're having to pick your head way up. I won't try anything right now. After the way my rifle just shot. Well, I just need you to be as stable as possible. All right. Try it again. Is that yeah, better? On target. Yes, sir. Yeah, it really is better. Can you come down lower or are you good right there? No, sir. I like it. Just right there. All right. Let me get behind the scope. Hang on. All right, so Remington had to go get his ear protection because this one has a muscle brick. And the wind has actually picked up to the point that now it's calling for two mils for wind versus one mil earlier. Uh, so I say hold the two mil, or not hold, but dial it. Just go ahead, dial two mils. Two. All right, so he's uh, 9.5 mils up, Yes. two mils left. Yes. All right, let me get behind the spotting scope. All right, ready when you are. Is that high to the left? I don't know. I, I can't tell. I'm, I'm holding the camera. Could you tell? It looks high to the left. I'm going to spin one more. Shoot the other target. Okay. Could you tell? No, sir. All right. Let me, let me get on the spotting screen. All right, man. Go for the ram. Could you tell? No, sir. All right. Go for the silhouette. Go for the silhouette. Oh, you're off to the right. You see that? Yes, sir. Go ahead and mill it and then send it. Did that you hit it? A little low? I don't know. That one looks a little low to the right. All right, so Remington could not shoot or could not hit this, the, the ram. Then I got my rifle and it took, I took, what, 10 shots or something? I couldn't hit it. And uh, 
But then I remember I have different ammo for this rifle. I just grabbed whatever I had loaded, okay? So then I shot it over the chronograph and I realized I was three tenths low, which means it was going right under the ram, okay? And it's going into a bush behind it. Not only that, uh, the weeds back there are about a, feet, uh, a foot tall and we had five inches of rain yesterday so there's nothing but mud so you're not going to see any dust fly up so shot over the chronograph realized i was low i clicked up then i hit the ram twice in a row back to back now he wants me to shoot the, uh, the silhouette the silhouette um so that's what i'm gonna do however it's been see now the wind's kicking up again so ah, i don't know if i'm gonna be able to hit it but i'm gonna try i got two shots uh, left, so we'll see how that goes. All right, Remington, how many hits did I get? Ooh. I know of at least five on the silhouette and four on the, the ram. Okay, so all right, so once I got my speed, then I was able to hit it more regularly. It was still, it was still hard to, hard to make constant, consistent impacts just because it's so far, the mirage is horrendous, you cannot see your misses, and uh. It's just really, really far. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we made some, uh, quite a few impacts. But uh, what do you think, man? I, I enjoyed this whole experience, and I know I've got a lot of work to do. Well, you know, it's, it's uh, you don't have a chronograph, right? No, sir. So, you know, that's going to be number one, right? You, you need to be able to see how fast you're going, how consistent your, load, uh, your loads are. As you saw... You know, 400, 500. I don't know. I still don't know what happened at 450 I don't or either. 475. Uh, I think you just you just weren't uh, settled in yet. That's all I can figure. Because then, you know, once we went to 550, then you were you were good. You know, and of course, then you double the distance. And my goodness, yeah. <laughs> the big, like I said, the biggest problem is we can't see the misses. Uh, you know your stuff hasn't been verified so we don't you know the bc could not be dead on so we might be a little higher a little low we just don't know you know because we don't know where it's going but anyway uh, my 47 did okay uh said it's just so far uh, i got quite a few impacts but it's just far <laughs> <laughs> and the wind so um one time i hit at 1.2 mils and uh, the next shot I, I couldn't hit so I started moving in started moving in and I finally hit it at uh, what did I hold 0.2 mils so a one a full mil difference from one shot I don't want to say to the next because uh, it, you know a good five minutes or so there was a one mil difference so the wind gets up and then it completely dies down like right now right it's completely dead um, but anyway what have you learned today? Have you learned anything? Please, I hope. Well, the, the one thing that I can say I took from this is don't shoot until you're 100% comfortable and ready. Yep. And the equipment I was using was not the right stuff. I mean, previously, my, my heartbeat would just take me off target. Because of the monopod, because right? Because of the monopod. And not having that shelf on there, shooting from different angles as you walk me through holding in different positions, instead of having my hand locked down in one position, I can adjust how I need to. So. What is that thing called? Just a shelf? I, I'm, I'm gonna say it's a palm shelf, if palm I'm not shelf. mistaken. Yeah. Well, um, you know, you just have to, uh, you know, practice, train, dry fire. Do you ever dry fire? Yes, sir. Yeah. Put a coin, put a coin on the end of the barrel. Have you mm -hmm. ever done that? No, sir. Put a coin on the end of the barrel and uh, you'll see. Put it right there on the barrel. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh, it's off. There you went. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you're that's pretty good. You're pretty stable because it stayed on there quite a bit. But I guarantee you tried that with a monopod. Oh, it would have been done. That coin would have been off of there so fast. My heartbeat would have knocked it off. Yeah. Anyway, all right, man. Well, thanks for coming. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Anytime. 
Um, open your bolt. Let's Sorry about that. Safety first. Yes, <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys learned something from this. Uh, Remington, I think he did. You learned something, right? Yep. Hopefully. <laughs> hey, you were able to make, so at least the ballistic chart, right? Or the ballistic program. Ballistic, yeah, yes, sir. I, you know, I was very skeptical about that. And then you, you proved it to me that it works. Yeah, I mean, it's just, they're doing the math for you. Yeah, if you know anybody looking for a monopod, I know where to find one. <laughs> And one of these palm shells. <laughs> I enjoyed this today. I needed that. Thank you very Good, much. Good, man. I'm glad. Merry Christmas. Yes, sir. That was your Christmas present, right? Yes, sir. Thank, <laughs> thank you very much. All right. She's going to have a hard time topping it next year. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys next time. Keep them centered. Tonight I'm feeling me.